He does not have a butthole. He has no need for one. Thanks to the internet, today we understand the rest of the world better than ever before. Unfortunately, not all of us have access to open online spaces, and nowhere can we see this difference better than in North Korea. They've earned the nickname the Hermit Kingdom, and we'll take a look at some of the things that we've heard North Koreans are led to believe. Kim Jong-il has written over 1,500 books. You are worthless, Eric Barrett! <laughs> One of the forms propaganda takes in North Korea is that its leaders, Kim Jong-un and before him his father Kim Jong-il, are miraculously impressive. Because of that, there's some overlap between the claims of the two Kims. For example, they were both supposedly genius composers at a very young age. Il, however, also seemed to be interested in proving his literary credentials. He claimed to have written over 1,500 books in his lifetime, which would really only have been possible if R.L. Stein was ghostwriting for him. The great Korean leader, comrade Kim Jong-il, is the highest incarnation of human thought. Right. They created hangover-free alcohol. Women are crying at his feet. It's really hard to know how much of this devotion is real. North Korea doesn't have a great reputation, but if this next claim was true, their international profile would go way up. That claim was that they'd created a new type of booze that wouldn't end up giving you a hangover. <laughs> Considering the fact that both Kim Jong-il and his son Kim Jong-un are both rumored to be the largest individual buyers of Hennessy in the world, you'd think that this project might be a key element in their continued reign, just so they can get out of bed in the morning, you know? But still, I know you kiss better than all men. Kim Jong-il was born under a double rainbow. I believe that Kim Jong-il was a god. I believe that he could read my mind. Like his death, Kim Jong-il's birth is taught to have coincided with numerous miraculous events. The official biography of Il states that he was born on a sacred mountain under a set of double rainbows. Beyond just the double stripes, which is child's play for a baby who could supposedly control the weather with his mind, <laughs> it's said that after Il was born, a new star appeared in the sky as well. That doesn't really sound familiar to me. Two thousand years later. The truth is that Il was actually born in a Soviet base where his father was stationed, and he was thus born in the USSR, a huge ally of North Korea back in its heyday. Their leader had nothing to do with the death of Kim jong Nam. Why would the young dictator of North Korea want to kill his own brother? Kim Jong-un wasn't the first choice to take over the family business. He was actually third in line after his two brothers. That all changed as the boys grew older and the elder brothers both ended up falling out of favor with their father. Kim jong Nam was caught trying to enter Japan with a fake passport and fell out of favor. However, after the death of Il, there were rumblings that Un might not be able to consolidate enough power to maintain control in North Korea. In response to that, Un reportedly killed everyone who he thought was plotting against him. His cousin shot in the head, his aunt and her daughter in exile and hiding. After his ascendancy, his brother Kim Jong-nam was traveling the world and also criticizing his brother's country while calling for reforms. That made him a popular choice to replace Eun in some secret circles. Luckily for Eun, however, I mean luckily, Nam was poisoned by two women in an airport in Malaysia. They rubbed a gel on his face that turned out to be an incredibly powerful and deadly nerve agent called VX. It is considered one of the most lethal chemical substances ever made a compound banned internationally, but still stockpiled by North Korea. The Un regime, however, blamed the assassination on others and publicly holds that line, despite the numerous glaring coincidences. They don't have short people. <laughs> Short is a relative term, but in a modern-day iteration of eugenics, Kim Jong-il reportedly attempted to raise the collective height of his people by rounding up all the men under a certain height and shipping them to an isolated island. However, Il was clearly insecure about his own height as well. You breaking my bars here, huh? You breaking my bars! As he was always pictured with men shorter than him on purpose and wore lifts in his shoes. North Korea invented the hamburger in the year 2000. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. 
Hamburgers have been around at least since the 18th century, and they're specifically named hamburgers because they were first created in Hamburg, Germany. But this didn't stop the Kim family from trying to take credit for inventing them, and claiming that they didn't exist at all up until the year 2000. In the 90s, North Korea suffered a terrible famine, in which it's estimated that millions perished from starvation. Afterwards, Kim Jong-il tried to win back the favor of his people by creating the, quote, double bread with meat. It seems that Il wanted to give his people something new to look forward to. He essentially said just that, in a quote once stating, I've made up my mind to feed quality bread and french fries to university students, professors, and researchers, even if we are in economic hardship. The question becomes then, where is all the beef coming from? <laughs> Their scientists cured AIDS and cancer. An animation celebrating North Korea's ability to strike the U.S. It's pretty clear by now that Kim Jong-un has an inferiority complex, and because of that his regime has to lie about their scientific achievements to their people and the world. In the summer of 2016, North Korean scientists claimed to have not only cured cancer, but also AIDS and Ebola. Right past them. There's something very tragicomic about this level of overreach, and something must not be right in North Korean high school biology classes if any of their people are buying into this. He could drive a car at the age of three. They love their dear leader, but it is an unrequited love. To ensure that the cult of personality was passed from father to son to son again, it has to be ingrained in the people that the new ruler of their country had or has similar traits to the leader before them, that somehow died despite being a god, I guess. To prop up Eun as the current leader, state-run media has reported stories that he could drive a car at only three years old, that he's an amazing composer of music that no one has ever heard, that he's a master-class martial artist, and that he was winning yacht races before he turned 10 against full-grown men. I love you, son. I love you, son. I love you, son. <laughs> These stories are taught in history classes across North Korea, as well as the idea, like I said before, that Eun is literally a god. You know what's more destructive than a nuclear bomb? Words. <laughs> Kim Jong-il was really good at golf. I eat pieces of <laughs> like you for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of <laughs> for breakfast? Perhaps the most famous claim about the leaders of North Korea is that Kim Jong-il, the father of Eun, was the best golfer of all time on his first try. It's been reported that on his first trip to a golf course in 1994, Kim Jong-il scored a 34 on an 18-hole golf course. That's an average of less than two strokes per hole, which may sound nuts, but once you hear that the dear leader had hit 11 holes in one, it actually kind of started to make some sense from there. Beyond the fact that this would have been a world record, the fact that it was his first and last time playing also makes this entire thing sort of sad. He never played the game again after that because he didn't want to spoil it for, for everybody else. While some rumors out of North Korea have been questioned, this has been repeated on documentaries by the North Korean handlers with a completely straight face, so that should really show you how effective the control of information has been. Their leaders don't need to use the toilet. Yes, I pee and the poo. So you have a butthole? I've got a butthole, and it's working overtime. As you've learned by now, the North Korean leadership really finds value in the cult of personality that surround their leaders. They teach their people that their leaders are essentially gods, in the same vein as the Emperor of Japan before and during World War II. Part of creating godlike figures removing some of the, let's say, grosser aspects of being a human being. With that in mind, the state media in North Korea has stated multiple times that neither Kim Jong-il or Kim Il-sung ever had to use the bathroom. Because of their godlike abilities, they perfectly absorbed everything they ate and drank, and thus didn't need to use the bathroom. Hi, I'm Britney Spears, and this is the Pooh Cocktail Supreme. <laughs> that storyline has since ceased, though, as it's been reported that Kim Jong Un actually has a mobile toilet follow him wherever he goes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Did you just shark? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> it was a dead camera guy. <laughs> That's right, one of the cars in his convoy was retrofitted to include a toilet. A poor driver. We know there are a lot of rumors swirling around North Korea, so feel free to set us straight in the comments below. Don't forget to check out some of our other vids. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah.
Let's get the f out of here. Hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell for a chance to win an iPhone X. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.